My friends, improving your first touch is as simple as this right here. What matters most as a footballer? Your shot? Your speed? No, your touch, your ability to manipulate the ball. This is the source of your power as a footballer. If this is weak, you're nothing more than a robot chasing around a rubber ball. And activate. Welcome to consciousness, uh, goal scoring 3000. There's a natural progression to improving your touch. And if you follow it, you are guaranteed to get better. So first we will perfect receiving the ball. Then we will improve passing and receiving. And then we will get into our creative ability to manipulate the ball. And finally, we'll show you some actual pro hacks on dealing with balls in the air so you can handle them just like us, the pros. keep the ball at your feet, you need to check out a few key points. Notice the two actions that I now instinctively do when receiving the ball. First, in slow motion, you can see that as I receive the pass, my foot is not a wall, it's fluid. I exaggerate the motion of pulling my leg backwards so you can see that it is a way to receive a hard pass. As the ball hits my foot, I time it perfectly by pulling back. This is how you take the energy out of the pass. There are even more advanced ways to do this by creating spin on the ball to neutralize an incredibly hard pass. And we went over it in day eight of our 21 day challenge. So make sure to check that out if you want to expand on this. But for today, just know that this is the number one thing to improve your first touch. Clearly, we'd like to receive the pass right on the inside of our foot, but sometimes that won't happen. So by learning to stay on our toes, lock our ankle and bring our foot back, we now have a better chance of taking a good touch. From there, notice that my next touch is a setup. I almost always tap the ball out just a few inches once I receive the pass. Now you could very well prepare all of this on your first touch, but it's a bit more advanced to do so. So it's always best to have the ball under control. And that second touch out at an angle allows me the time to get my head up to prepare to dribble, pass, or shoot. Get in the habit of always touching the ball out from up and under you. If it's underneath you, you have less options and it will stifle you incredibly. Now, with that knowledge under our belt, it is time to train what we just learned. And notice that I've got a rinky-dink wall set up. It's literally just a board up against a metal fence, and I can still use it. I actually prefer this, and you'll see why in a second. What do you notice about the way that I'm passing, moving, and receiving? First, it's with a bit of pace. I'm on my toes, and when the ball is traveling in, I'm not flat-footed. Second, I'm taking my first touch with the outside of my foot, tapping it out immediately. We have leveled up here. I'm alternating left and right, and the reason I like a crappy board is because it's unpredictable, like playing in the game or when you've got that guy on your team that just cannot serve you a ball. Regardless, you can see that no matter what part of the body it goes to, I get it under control, I get it back out, and from time to time, I dance a little bit on the ball, a step over or two never hurt anybody, and then boom, back out. I'm just a few feet out from the wall today so we can increase our reps, but if you can manage to do this a few minutes every day, you will start to notice that you naturally get better come game time. One of the most underrated aspects of improving your touch to master the basics of juggling is to master ball control. This right here puts the cherry on top of everything we've learned so far. If you're not a good juggler, start with some of our other juggling videos where we break down hacks and things to bring you up to pro level. If you're still watching this, leave us a like and subscribe. Come on now. If you can juggle to 10 consistently, then you are ready for this drill in which all you need to do is juggle and then kick the ball slightly higher than your head or higher than what you're used to and then simply work on cushioning the ball and continuing to juggle. The same principle applies here as the ball comes down. You do not stiffen your leg. You cushion it. We move on to juggling a bit more complex using our feet, our thighs, and our head. Throw all of this stuff into training when you can and throw in some around the world if you've got that in your trick book. 
And from there, we can work on one of the toughest parts of the game. Now, just like we mentioned, taking the ball out of the air is a matter of pulling your leg back as the ball hits it and then remaining fluid so the ball moves where we want. And one of the greatest tricks you will learn is that receiving an incredibly high ball out of the air can be made easier by using your thigh or trapping the ball against the ground in one of the methods we're gonna show you here in just a bit. So if you have a friend to throw, great. If not, toss it up yourself. Notice that when we receive the ball with our thigh, instead of pulling back, we can actually be more aggressive and hit the ball up. Our thigh is a big wide surface area compared to our feet and it allows so much more freedom so don't forget to use that when you're in a tight area. Dealing with our chest is an even bigger surface area except that we can't use it in the exact same way as our thighs. The game will dictate the right move. You simply need to know who's around you. So looking at this clip of me in a game situation you can see with my back slightly to the goal and a defender literally up on me I can't let the ball drop without protecting it. So what you see me do is decide to keep the ball in the air and then juggle in order for me to shield from the defender and try and get out, which I eventually do and I'm awarded a foul as I start to turn towards goal. Trapping the ball like this with the sole of your foot is a very easy way to keep the ball under control out of the air. You've just got to make sure you time it and lock your ankle. The ball should get very little room to bounce. When it hits the ground, your foot is there and from there, you can decide what to do next. If you love Ronaldinho, then you will love this next one, trapping the ball out of the air like this was his specialty. And if you really want to go in depth, check out his highlights, try and see and analyze what he's doing. You'll notice that most of the time his foot will match the drop of the ball. It will be in the air and as the ball drops, his foot will drop at the same time. Okay. So I repeat for a third time, you must lock your ankle, but you must also be fluid at the same time. Time. Once the ball hits your foot, relax and pull it away and guide it down to the ground. From there, we want to pick up on settling the ball on the move. We want to time the half bounce by using the inside of our foot to move in the direction that we want. This is fairly easy to get down and worth the practice. You can do the exact same thing with the outside of your foot, which may be more natural to you. You got to test it out and see for yourself. So please don't make this another video that you sit, watch and do nothing. Train like crazy if you can put in 10 minutes of this if possible, but the difference between being a player that will improve and get better and the ones that don't is down to mentality, discipline, and action. So never forget, Goal Remy decides. All right, guys, that's the vid. Come for a stroll with me here at Gryffindor Palace, as you guys can see. Hogwarts is a real thing. You didn't know that. I present to you Gryffindor. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you don't subscribe for Gryffindor, shame. Go and try your luck. Test me in again.